What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for watching another video. Um, if you guys can, if you're new here, please like this video and subscribe. It lets YouTube know that I'm doing at least an okay, decent job. And I really appreciate that because it really helps me out. But uh, anyways, a couple of months ago, well, more towards the beginning of the year, I made a video that was titled, uh, Should You Buy a Mini Cooper? And uh, it got a pretty good reception. And uh, people had different things to say about, you know, their experiences one out. But a common question that I've been getting on YouTube as well as my social medias is why did I personally choose? Like what my reasons were for choosing to buy a Mini Cooper over other platforms that are available in the same price range? You know, what was my motive to buy a Mini over something else? And I thought that was an interesting topic to get into. And I'm going to explain a little bit, you know, what I was looking for in a car and why I decided to buy a Mini over other choice vehicles in the same price range and you know same sort of performance and whatnot and just overall you know why to me the mini was better or more to my liking just because i did end up test driving many different cars at that time when i you know right right before i went to purchase my mini i test drove different cars and ultimately uh the mini cooper was just the car that i decided that would be best fit for me and just the car that you know right off the bat i fell in love with so let's get into it. I'll give you the reasons, you know, why I ended up choosing my car over others that I also was going to get into. And hopefully you guys enjoy. So guys, I've had my Mini for over two and a half years, closer to three years now. And it was a tough choice because I had a certain budget that I really wanted to comply with. And there was a couple of cars that I was looking at. The three main cars that I was looking at, well, there was four, but, uh, the one car that I was looking at was a Mark 7 Volkswagen GTI. But at that time, it was a little out of the budget that I had for myself. And I I, I could have gotten one. I had the money to get one. Um, financially, it would have been fine. But it was out of my budget. Of my, I, I, I guess a little out of the price range that I wanted to go to. And I was really trying to be strict on a budget because I knew in the future that I'd probably want a second car. Depending on what I did, I'd want to have a daily so that I wouldn't be putting too many miles on my car and whatnot. But... Um, a Mark 7 GTI was the first choice that I was going to get, but I decided against it just because if you guys haven't known, I've owned five Volkswagens now. I've had two Mark 5 Jettas, a Mark 4 Jetta 1.8T, a Mark 5 GTI, and then this is my fifth, which is the car that I'm in right now is a Mark 6 TDI Sport Wagon. So I kind of wanted to stay away from the Volkswagens because that's all I was used to. I kind of wanted to try something else. So the other three cars that I was super interested in that were in my price range was obviously the Mini Cooper, obviously an S or a JCW. Uh, there was the Ford Fiesta ST, which I really liked. And then there was the ninth gen Honda Civic Si. Now, right off the bat, first car I went to go test drive was the Honda Civic Si. And to be honest, I was super underwhelmed. I did not like it. It was super slow. And, I, and mind you, I know those cars aren't like right off the bat factory stock are fast cars like or quick cars but i was just super underwhelmed it just wasn't for me i test drove it was a 2013 or 2014 um a four-door black si and it was nice don't like don't get me wrong it drove well it shifted good clutch felt nice it was a nice driving car but it wasn't what i was looking for and after driving it i was kind of underwhelmed i even let the salesman know that it, you know i thought it might have been something that i wanted but i was going to stay away from so then I went to go test drive my other option, which was a Ford Fiesta ST. And I'll be honest, after driving that, I was this close. I was so close to pulling the trigger and putting a deposit down and then just purchasing the car because I absolutely loved the way that that Fiesta ST drove. It was, it was decently quick, it was comfortable, it handled great. It was everything that I wanted in a car, pretty much. Uh, it was turbo, you know, I, w I wanted a turbo car. That's just what I was looking for. And the car pretty much fit everything that I wanted. But I went with a friend and, you know, I still had other cars that I was gonna go look at. So I ended up testing, uh, test driving another Mini Cooper S that I uh, had found on uh, Car Gurus. And uh, it was nice, but uh, for what they were asking, the mileage was kind of high. But at the same time though, I liked it. So I went to go find another Mini Cooper that would be lower miles for the price. So that's where I ended up finding mine. And uh, I test drove my Mini. 
and I loved it. It was quick, it was lightweight, it sounded, you know, it sounded decent, you know, for a stock car, because even in sport mode, the car does do like little gurgles and pops, nothing crazy, but it just had a very sporty feel to it. Nice tight steering, the handling was great, it picked up quick, but um, I was still very indecisive. So I went back to the Ford dealer that I saw the Fiesta at, and I test drove it again, and I was so like, indifferent like I didn't know what to do like I really love the Fiesta but I like the Mini Cooper too so I went back again and to and you know and I drove the Mini and then ultimately you know to me I don't know the Mini felt more at home uh and I'll explain why uh I chose the Mini over you know the uh, Fiesta ST but the Mini just felt better and uh I'll get into why I thought the Mini was better so the Fiesta ST was great. Like I said, it was quick, it handled well. There was more room because it is a four door as opposed to the Mini being a two door. But I don't know, I feel like the Mini had just like a different feel to it. It has like a better, at least for me, it's just like more of a character, I guess. And I don't know, I feel like there was just more maybe like aftermarket support for it. And the car just, the car was just fun. It kind of won me over because ultimately when I was looking for a car, I did want a turbo two-door hatch that's why like I guess the SI like it was just a thought in my mind but I it never really came to flourishing because it just wasn't what I was looking for and I was under realm but the mini literally had everything that I wanted and more it was a two-door turbo it was quick and the thing with the mini that I really love about it it's a very versatile car so if you need a daily driver it is the perfect daily driver if you need a track car do, some, do like some kind of suspension and just drive it. I mean, the car stock handles amazing. Put some tires, lightweight wheels, and a little bit of suspension upgrades, and you have a crazy time attack track car. Or if you want to go the other route, you can stance it. They look great, you know, slammed with wide wheels. If that's what you're into, the car looks good too. Or if you want to make a quick street car, you can upgrade the turbo and you could go from there. You can have a 300 horsepower Mini Cooper that weighs 24, 2,500 pounds. And obviously, you know, it's not going to be a great quarter mile car, but you want to do some highway pulls on the street, the car is great. So I like how versatile the Mini was. And ultimately, honestly, like in my opinion, the Fiesta SD felt kind of cheap. But I don't like the the interior was sort of cheap. I don't know. It just wasn't. It just wasn't for me. I'm not like I'm not hating on the Fiesta SD at all. I love that. I was honestly super super close to buying it. So it's not like I'm hating on it. I love that car, and I still like it to this day because I know if it wasn't for me going for the Mini, I would have had a Fiesta SD right now. That I'd be, you know, it probably would have been on this channel instead of a Mini. But. I don't know, the Mini for me was just it. I love the European styling. I just love everything about the car. It just felt right. I felt at home. And the thing was, I bought the car as well because I knew one day I'd want to get a daily. And you know, now I have the back seats out. There's only two seats in it. And honestly, for what I was looking to do with the car, I just feel like the Mini fit better. And for the price, um, I know people have asked me how much I paid for my two. And I don't mind sharing that because I want people to know like, what kind of deals you could get out there. Now, mind you, this was almost three years ago, so the prices on these cars have dropped drastically even more. But now, hear me out. I paid 14 grand out the door flat for my R56 Mini Cooper S, which is the 2012, and it had 28,000 miles on it. Now, you might think that's a lot, but at the same time, $3,000 went to a seven year, 80,000 mile warranty from Mini, and Almost immediately after I got it, maybe a week or two after, I actually ended up calling the uh, warranty company and canceling it and having them give me my uh, $3,000 back because I knew I was going to end up modifying the car regardless. So having the warranty, I mean, it would have been nice if it would be a daily driver that I kept stock, seven years, 80,000 miles. That's a long warranty. That's a good warranty. But I knew that I was going to modify the car. So there was really no point in me going and using that warranty because it probably would have been voided right away because of all the mods that I have to it now. So I ended up getting $3,000 back. So the car actually ended up being uh, $11,000 out the door for 28,000 miles, which to me really isn't a bad deal. The car had very low miles. Only thing is now, my first year and a half driving the car, I didn't have a daily, so I put a ton of miles on it. The car is a little over 60,000 miles now. But in the past year, I've only put about maybe 2,500 miles. I don't even think that much. I'm just, I think, but, um, yeah, so that was the deal that I got, and the Fiesta ST was a little more expensive. It would have came out to maybe another two or three grand. The one that I had gone to look at, it was a white um, Fiesta ST, and if I remember correctly, it had about 
25,000 miles, but they wanted about $14,000 with nothing included. So I was willing to pay because my budget was around there. I didn't want to go anything over like fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 for a car, which is why the uh, Mark 7 GTI was a little out of the question. I could have gotten one, but at the same time, it would have had a lot higher miles. I might have had to get something that had like 60 or 70,000 miles for like 14 or 15 grand. So I wasn't like down for it. And the thing is now Mark 7s have gone down in price now that the Mark 8s are coming out. And you know, you have the facelift ones now and all that stuff. So the Mark 7s that I were looking at, um, they had gone down in price. And mind you, I wanted a two door and, a, and uh, I wanted a manual two door and it was kind of hard to find because um, most of the Mark 7 GTIs are four doors and DSG. So I was looking for a uh, harder Mark 7 to find, which was the two door manual. So anyways, I just forgot about that. But yeah, that's pretty much why I bought the Mini. I just wanted a quick, lightweight car, mainly a hatchback that was turbo that just had a very big aftermarket that I could do whatever I want. And honestly, the Mini has really taught me a lot. Um, like I said, I almost bought that Fiesta, but the Mini just has something about it. There's just some kind of character, something about the Mini that just, I don't know, that I loved. I just really loved it. And um, it's been great, it's been super reliable. I've had no like crazy problems with it. And honestly, you know, almost owning it for three years, I really have no complaints about it. Yeah, obviously the car is gonna get me mad sometimes. You know, you know if you're a car owner, uh, when you're working on a car, things will bother you left and right. But at the end of the day, you know you love your car and just gotta maintain it and keep it well. And honestly, my car's been perfect. So um, let me know what you guys think. Um, you know, what car do you have and what ultimately, uh, made you decide that you wanted to buy that specific car because I'm really interested to see like what uh, you guys are into and why. Uh, like I said, so let me know in the comments what car you have um, and let me know also, you know, uh, what made you buy your specific car over other ones that you had in mind because I'm super interested. Like I said, a lot of people came to me and wanted to know my reasoning and uh, that's pretty much it. Hopefully that covers like all of it, you know, from like budget wise to what I was looking for in a car. But anyway, guys, Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you guys are having a great day. Like I said, uh, thank you guys for supporting my channel. Uh, it's super small right now, but like I said, it's been slowly growing and people have been giving me a very positive reception, which really motivates me to keep wanting to make videos, you know, more and uh, try to put out better content. It has been cold here in Jersey, so it's kind of hard to work on the car, even though I do have my garage now, but I do have stuff on the way. I'm going to be making a video. Um, giving you an update on what's going to be going on with the Mini because I do have things that are coming very, very soon that are in the works and I'm going to, you know, I want to tell you guys everything that, that I've planned. So uh, anyways, if you guys are new here, please like this video and subscribe. It really helps me out. Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. Um, but yeah, so hopefully everybody's having a great day. Hopefully you enjoy this video and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.